Hi there, this is Tracy, and um, I, I love going to um, garage sales, and I love going to thrift stores because I just love the recycle part about it, and I especially love going into the book section, and I usually buy a couple of books a week, um, just going in there and finding some treasures. This week, I found a really cool treasure. We all know that the DSM-5 is the current version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. We're up to book five right now. So what I found in the thrift store was an actual book called the DSM-4, and it's the case book, which is a learning companion to the DSM-4. So this one's a little bit older, but I, I sat there and perused it before I bought it. And what I found was so interesting is it actually is intended for psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists if they, they get this deep into learning about things. Um, and they've actually got example cases and there are three in this book that I will read to you over time, all different videos because they're kind of long. But what I found fascinating was that it, um, it talks about the case and then it's got this sort of discussion. And I just want you guys to see what it is that a psychiatrist might be listening to, reading, or learning about and see if these situations relate to you. Um, each one of these three cases, this is case number one we're going to read, is, um, again, based on, on different types of narcissistic behavior. This one is called False Rumors, and it starts off like this. Bob, age 21, comes to the psychiatrist's office, accompanied by his parents on the advice of his college counselor. He begins the interview by announcing that he has no problems. His parents are always overly concerned about him, and it's only to get them off their back that he's agreed to this evaluation. I am dependent on them financially, but not emotionally. The psychiatrist was able to attain the following story from Bob and his parents. Bob had apparently spread malicious and false rumors about several of the teachers who had given him poor grades, implying that they were having homosexual affairs with students. This, as well as his increasingly erratic attention at his classes over the past term, this following the loss of a girlfriend, prompted the school counselor to suggest that Bob and his parents would, that help was urgently needed. Bob claimed that his academic problems were exaggerated, his success in theatrical production was being overlooked, and he was in full control of the situation. He did not deny that he spread the false rumors, but showed no remorse or apprehension about the possible repercussions for himself or the teachers. Bob is tall, stylishly dressed young man with a dynamic wave in his hair. His manner is distant but charming, and he obviously enjoys talking about a variety of intellectual topics and current affairs. However, he assumes a condescending, clinical and abused manner towards the psychiatrist and the evaluation process. He conveys a sense of superiority and control over the evaluation. Accounts of Bob's development were complicated by his bland dismissal of its importance and the conflicting accounts of it by his parents. His mother was an extremely anxious person, immaculately dressed and outspoken woman. She described Bob as having been a beautiful, joyful baby who was gifted and brilliant. She recalled that after a miscarriage, when Bob was one, her and her husband now became more devoted to his care, given the love for the two of them. The father was rugged-looking, soft-spoken, successful man. He recalled a period in Bob's early life when they had been very close, and that even 
that he had confided in Bob about their personal matters and expressed deep feelings with him. He also noted that Bob had become progressively more resentful with the births of his other two siblings. The father laughingly commented that Bob would have liked to have been an only child. He recalls a series of conflicts between Bob and authority figures over rules and that Bob had expressed disdain for his peers at school and for his siblings. In his early school years, Bob seemed to play and interact less with other children than most other children do. In fifth grade, after a change in teachers, he became arrogant and withdrawn and refused to participate in class. Nonetheless, he remained with excellent grades. In high school, he'd been involved in an episode similar to the one that had led him to the current evaluation. At that time, he spread false rumors about a classmate who he'd been competing against for a role in the school play. In general, it became clear that Bob had never been one of those boys. He didn't like dramatics in movies. He had never shown an interest in athletics. He also appeared to be a loner, although he did not complain of loneliness. When asked, he professed to take pride in being different from his peers. He also distanced himself from his parents and often responded with silence to their overtures for more communication. His fa parents felt that behind the guarded demeanor was a sad, alienated, yet lonely young man. Though he was well known to his classmates, the relationships he had with them were generally under circumstances which he looked up to for intellectual or dramatic talents. Bob conceded that others viewed him as a cold or insensitive. He rarely acknowledged these qualities, but that he had no close friends, and, and then he had dismissed it as this was unimportant. This represented strength to him. He went on to note that when others complained about these qualities in him, it was largely because of their own weaknesses. In his view, they envied him and longed to have him care about them. He believed they sought to gain by having an association with him. Bob had occasional dates, but no steady girlfriends. Although the exact history remains unclear, he acknowledged that a girl whose loss seemed to have led to this escalating school problems had been someone who he had indeed cared about. She was the first person with whom he had had sexual relationship, and the relationship had apparently dissolved after she had expressed an increasing desire to spend more time with her girlfriends and go to school social events. So that is the uh, discussion, and um, or that is the, the case filings about this young man. And now I'm going to read you, it, it's kind of brief, um, the discussion of the false rumors. So this is what the dsm four is telling doctors. This case was supplied as an example of narcissistic personality disorder, and the reader will certainly be struck by Bob's grandiosity and insensitivity to others, which is a lack of empathy. In addition, he's extremely jealous of his siblings. He spell, spreads rumors about students whom he is competing with and believes that they envy him. In identifying behavior that just justifies the two additional cr criteria required for this, we made some re in reference to the limited case material that was pre presented. For example, we assume that the reason Bob had this trouble with the authority about conforming to school rules that he does not believe in the rules and that they don't believe, apply to him. And this behavior is an indication of entitlement. We interpret this, his spreading rumors about teacher and peers as evidence that he was interpersonally exploitative. His need for constant attention and admiration is suggested by his dramatic presentation. So that's the story of Bob. 
and that is from the DSM-4 casebook. And um, if you look at it and you really see how they analyze it, um, he might have been talking for an hour, but they break it down. Grandiosity, ding, check. Um, these are red flags that, that the doctor could see really easily. Can you look back and think about flags, grandiosity, things that you might have missed? Arrogance, thinking they're better than others, they're entitled. Look back at your narcissist and think about this in this more clinical view. Take away your emotions, take away the feelings that, um, that would lead you to not look at this objectively. And you only have to do it for a few minutes. Just kind of hover above and look down just as we read this story. Does anything about this connect to you and your narcissist? This is Tracy. That is all I've got. And if you are interested in learning more about narcissist abuse, you can visit NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. We've just launched a quiz. And more quizzes are you with a narcissist. So if you would like to take that quiz, go to NarcissistAbuseSupport.com and click on the button and take our quiz. And let's see if we can help you.